Okay, the project at hand is a 2008 Ford Escape. Customer says he's having some issues with ABS activation when he's not in need of ABS activation. Basically, he says the ABS light comes on almost every time he stops, and he described it as the uh, pedal feels like it's grinding. So let's fix it. So this is a scan tool data, and uh, you can see the lower left graph keeps dropping out. The line is not consistent with the other three wheels. And that is the right front wheel speed sensor signal. It never spikes higher, but it often drops out. You can see it is not consistent throughout this whole test drive uh, with the other three wheel speed sensors. Gives us a pretty good idea of what we need to look at. All right, I want to show you what I found. Now, if you remember on the graph, it was showing that it was the right front wheel speed sensor that was dropping out. I want you to take a close look at that. Oh, let me dim this light a little bit here. Watch that. We're looking at this tone ring right here. Watch that tone ring as I spin this around. Right there. Let me see if I can zoom in so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Right there. So the tone ring is cracked right there. And that extra gap is what's causing us to lose our signal. That's why our signal keeps dropping out on the speed sensor. So the fix for this vehicle is going to be a new axle. So let's throw an axle in it. The tone rings often crack due to rust and corrosion building up between the tone ring and the axle. Uh, those tone rings are actually pressed onto the axle. It's a pretty straightforward job replacing the axle on, on this vehicle. Pull the tire off, pull the brakes off, hang the caliper out of the way, and then uh, separate the strut from the knuckle, and that'll give you enough wiggle room to get that axle shaft out of there. I just pried the caliper, the piston back and the brake caliper enough to get it back on there. Those are 18 millimeter bolts that secure the caliper bracket to the steering knuckle. You don't have to take the caliper off the bracket, just leave it all together with the pads on it. I used an S-hook from a bungee cord to hang it on the spring. There's a little 10 millimeter bolt right there I'm pulling out. That's for the brake hose. No, that's actually for the ABS sensor signal wire. I just pulled that off to give it enough slack so that we could pull that steering knuckle out. Now these bolts right here are 20, or these uh, nuts are 21 millimeter. Actually, no, I'm, I'm wrong. Those are 18, 18s, both sides, front and back. Sometimes you have to tap them with a hammer to get them loose. Uh, once you get one out, you can usually rock the thing back and forth and wiggle the other one out of there. Now, this is a Ford thing here. For whatever reason, these splines fit so tight inside the, the spindle on these Fords that sometimes you got to use a uh, puller to push the axle out of the uh, wheel bearing spindle. I left the nut on there just so I wouldn't peen the threads. Still had to use an air hammer to drive the rest of the way out. I'm definitely going to throw a little grease on the new one when I put it together.
Look at that. The tone ring broke right off. That's not supposed to happen. Here you can see the crack, and you can see it's corroded and rusted between the tone ring and the axle. Now normally you can just get up in there and uh, tap this axle and it'll pop out. This The passenger side axle doesn't go into the transmission, it goes into an intermediate shaft that's about a foot and a half long. It's got a carrier bearing and a couple of nuts that mounts there, but this one just was not coming apart. And I should mention, this is worst case scenario. These normally pop right out and, and come apart relatively easy. This one decided to be a, a special case here. and it, it just made the whole job a little bit more aggravating. And it, it also involved about, I don't know, maybe an hour, maybe 40 minutes more time added to the whole job. I actually edited out a whole segment of uh, me trying to pop that axle shaft loose from the intermediate shaft and it just wasn't happening. So I decided, okay, it's not going to come apart that way. I'm going to have to pull the intermediate shaft off as well. So there's a push pin and I think four 10 millimeter bolts that hold that splash shield in place. I'm just pulling those out right now. And again, you typically don't have to do this if you're just swapping out the passenger axle. Nine times out of ten, they'll, they'll pop right apart. You don't have to take all this apart. Now there's a heat shield between the uh, exhaust crossover pipe and uh, the uh, seal for the axle and I you don't have to mess with that I didn't realize that and I wasted a few minutes pulling the couple bolts out of that but you don't have, what I'm doing right now you don't have to do that The axle will come out fine with that heat shield in place. It looked like it was going to cause an issue, but it it didn't. Now holding the axle in, there's a basically like a carrier bearing with uh, two studs on a bracket, and then on the bearing side, on the axle side, it's just got two 13 millimeter nuts. And you pull those two nuts off, that axle will slide right out. There's no retention in the transmission for the axle at this point. Uh, the axle is retained by that carrier bearing. And then uh, I'll pull those two nuts off and the whole axle with the intermediate shaft will slide straight out of the transmission. Figured that foam pad should protect my knee from a hammer strike, right? I can see at this point it's starting to move, but it's just not coming out easy. There. Finally separated it. You can see it's all rusted.
Okay, that part you saw me beating on, this part right here, well, beating on the axle to separate it from this part, this is called the intermediate shaft. This end goes into the transmission, and this is just a bracket with a bearing in it, and then the axle shaft slides onto here. The issue with this one is, is this seal went bad, and I don't mean this right here, <laughs> if you can see it. I damaged it right there, taking it apart. But the seal went bad, and all the grease that was in here ingested water, debris, and everything else, and then it just corroded and the axle stuck together. This is definitely worst case scenario. You never have to beat these apart this hard unless this happens. That being said, I called everywhere trying to get this axle shaft, this intermediate shaft. Nobody has it, and they said it's a five to seven day wait. And I don't want this vehicle sitting in my lift for that long, so I called the customer, explained to him the situation. Um, he told me to clean it up, put it back together. He's 81 years old. The axle shaft is going to outlive him. The only bad part about putting this back together like this, I'm, I mean not like this, I'm going to clean it, but this will happen again because this seal is bad. This is all serviced as an assembly, not just the seal. So he said it's going to outlast his driving career at, at his point in age. So I don't recommend it, but you can certainly do it, and we're going to do it. We're going to clean this up, and we're going to put it back together. The bearing is fine. The only issue of reusing this part is this is going to happen again. So the next guy uh, that goes to take the axle shaft out is going to have a battle just like I did. So this should be replaced. But, you know, given the situation we're in, we're going to reuse it. So let's clean it up. Let's fix this thing. should mention this little clip right here this is what retains the axle shaft onto this shaft this little clip and that was just seized right up and then this whole splined area was just full of gunk so that's all you're breaking loose is the is that little clip just like on a regular axle I put it in a vise and I'm using a pick just to clean out uh, each one of the uh, grooves in the shaft because I couldn't get all the way in beyond that seal with the wire wheel to clean that out. And I knew it might be a bit of a battle putting it back together, so I just wanted to make sure I was able to get it back together. Not that it matters, I'm just trying to straighten that seal out as much as I can. I mean, the seal failed before I dented it anyways. But It's really important if you're going to do something like this, you assemble those two axle shafts on the floor or on your bench before you put them back in the car. Because with the rubber in that... Uh, mount for that carrier bearing, I would have never been able to get those two axle shafts together had I put the intermediate shaft back in the car first. I had to straighten out a dent I put in the uh, little heat shield there. Yeah, and don't forget to put that heat shield back on because that would really suck to put this all together. Realize it after the fact. Now that would have, those two shafts would have went together a lot easier had the intermediate shaft been new. Would not have taken all that beating to get them pushed together. Tightening down those two 13 millimeter nuts that hold that carrier bearing in place. 
You'll notice I don't I don't use that new nut that it came with. The, the nut that the shaft came with didn't include a washer. Throwing a little grease on the splines. Hopefully it'll come apart easier next time. And the assembly is pretty straightforward, just the opposite of disassembly. It's always a good idea to get your vehicle aligned after you do any front end work like this. Even though those holes in the strut and steering knuckle weren't slotted, it still throws the alignment off just a tiny bit. So it's a good idea to get a wheel alignment after this. It's also important to use a torque wrench. I see a lot of guys run these down with uh, impact gun, but and if you want that bearing to last, torque it, torque it with a torque wrench. Don't just tighten it down with a gun. bolts that hold the caliper on, uh, the caliper bracket on are 21 millimeter or 13 sixteenths. Again, I'm putting those two little eight millimeter bolts back on that heat shield that I didn't need to take off. And we're going to put our splash shield back in place with the four 10 millimeter bolts and the one push pin. I dipped all the bolts in grease to make them a little easier. So if anybody ever has a hard time putting these retainer springs on, I slowed this part of the video down. Set the bottom in first, pull the top piece back, and then just tap the center with a hammer, and it'll pop right into place every time. Just like that. I see a lot of guys fighting with those. All right, we'll put the tire on. We'll take it for a test drive with the scanner hooked up, and we'll see if we fix the problem. So this is a scan tool data. Again, the lower left is the right front. So we're watching that blue line and you can see now that the, 
the speed sensor signal is consistent with the other three speed sensors, the other three wheels. So we have confirmed that it's a fix. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate the support.